All right, everyone, Graham Wickner here with another YouTube video. And I'm coming to you right now from Lake Alina, which is not far from my house. And I decided to come here today because of its beauty. And I'll show you it at some point, but this place is just so tranquil. You can't not be in a great mood and feel the vibrations with nature. It just is an awesome place. But the real reason that I wanted to record this video today is because this is actually a year today since my dad passed away. And I wanted to talk about this because if you follow my Snapchat or Instagram, you know I talk about adversity all the time. It's one of the things I talk about the most. And the reason I talk about this is because in the last, I would say five years, like through college and up until this last year especially, I dealt with a lot of adversity. And I think it's really important that we address adversity and understand that it's here to make us better and make us grow rather than let us let it break us down and uh, so what I'm gonna do is just tell you a little bit about what's happened in the last year because a lot of you maybe you've just started following me or even my closest friends I probably don't really tell much to you know I'm a pretty private guy besides all, all the stuff that I post on Instagram and Snapchat as far as like you know more personal matters I usually keep that kind of stuff to myself or at least I always have but I, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about it today so you guys could understand where I'm coming from and why I do the things that I do and why I'm so passionate about becoming better in my body spirit every single day. And so uh, it's October 6, 2016. And so uh, a year ago, um, October 6, 2015, um, uh, my dad passed away. And it was a, a long struggle with lung cancer. Um, it was two years. Uh, he had it for uh, probably more than that, but two years since we knew about it. And uh, my dad was a tough guy. And um, watching him go through it was one of the most humbling experiences of my life. So I'm going to get to it. Uh, I'll start talking about it, I guess. So I guess about a year and a half ago, that was when I decided that I wanted to pursue a career in bodybuilding. It's funny, I was actually telling this story to someone the other day. They were like, so what, what did you, oh, it was an interview uh, with a friend. Uh, and he was asking me, he's like, hey, um, so like, what got you into this? And I actually had come home, and this was, what, January of 24, 2015. And I had come home from college, and I had to help my dad because he was sick. And, you know, I wanted to be around the house just, just to get, just to lend a hand, you know, be there for support and whatnot. And, uh... It was a cold, cold, snowy night. We must have had like two feet of snow, and mom made chili, so you know I was, you know, camping out on the couch hard. <laughs> and uh, I, I guess I was on Netflix, and I don't know what made me decide to watch it, but I decided to watch Pumping Iron. I had heard of it, but I'd never seen it, and uh, I watched it, and I thought it was amazing in a hilarious but serious kind of way. Uh, I, I really, really loved it, and I think after I saw that. I had the thought, I was like, you know what, like, I'm really into lifting, I've been doing it for a long time, I, I think I might be able to do this, slash might want to do this. Now at the time I owned a landscaping business with a good friend of mine, so that was definitely what the plan was for the rest of this year, at least the rest of the summer, that was the summer of 2015. That was the plan, so, it was like on the back burner, but it was, you know, percolating in my mind, I was like, that's an interesting thought. So, a few months later we start, the, uh, the season for landscaping which starts in like early April or March I should say you know it's uh, what can I say about landscaping it's it's also a humbling experience you know if you see someone doing it understand they're working their butts off it's long days it's hot sweaty and nature definitely doesn't reward you for cutting her up you know you you cut down a little bush you're gonna get a rock sl slung in your face your dirt I'll smear all over you or grass in your hair or in your mouth or all kinds of crazy things happen it's it's brutal and dust you know you're like <laughs> you know all kinds of stuff crazy but that was what I was doing at the time and somehow I don't know how I would do it but I would find a way to sneak into the gym at night late after my after my uh, my work days or sometimes I come home and just pass out at like five because I'd be so drained from being in the Sun all day and I guess it was about June of, of 2015 where I decided I was like hey you know I see like these this is new division physique like it's kind of interesting like I don't have to be as big um, I don't have to put on crazy weight. Like, I just got to be in, like, you know, really cut. And 
I was like, that's something I might be interested in. Like, that also looks good. And I would still be able to play basketball and swim and do all the other things, activities that I want to do, not just lift weights and eat, you know, chicken and, and rice, <laughs> which sounds great, but, you know, chicken gets a little, I'm not going to lie. Um, so I thought about it, and I was like, hey, it's not, it's not a bad idea. Like, I'll think about it some more. And so as, as the summer drew on a little bit, um, about July, my dad was getting radiation therapy uh, at UPenn, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And uh, after like the third time, I could I could start to see that he was uh, he was losing a little bit. Uh, he just like you'd look at him and he he might not be looking back at you totally, if that makes sense. Like I knew he was there, but not fully. And I think he knew that like maybe the end was coming near. And to be honest with you, uh, if we go back to the very first time my dad told me that he was sick with lung cancer, I looked at him and I know he didn't know it at the time, but I knew that. Not only was was this going to be a fight that he probably wasn't going to win, but uh, it was also going to completely change my life forever. And uh, I, I remember multiple times sitting down by myself and having a serious conversation and just being like, hey, you have two ways you can go with your life. You can either let this take you down with it, or you can rise up and become the absolute best person you could be and, and, and really just embrace this adversity. And uh, shifting gears back to 2015, um, in the middle of the summer, I, like I said, I noticed him. He was taking a turn for the worse. And uh, at this point, I had scheduled all my classes for the fall, and I was about a year from graduating. Um, and I actually had my five of the hardest classes at, at Temple, where I went to school, Temple University in Philadelphia at the time. And they were, they were not easy. And uh, between that and running my landscaping business, and then in August, of that year, I decided that I want I wanted to do a show, um, a physique competition the next year. So I started my training immediately, and so I was going all day, and uh, and uh, I knew that this was going to be a serious commitment. But I also had seen the, the vision of me on the stage before, so I knew I could do it. And I've seen, and that's so important when I say that I've seen myself there. And when I say scene, like I've envisioned it so many times that like I felt it and almost have even done it before. And I knew what my physique was going to look like before I was even there. I knew what I was capable of. So that, that those seeds had already been planted. And now like the real task was just to handle the things that were right in front of me. So all I really could do was train as hard as I possibly could. Grind as hard as I possibly could. Study as hard as I possibly could. And help my family as hard and as best as I possibly could. And that was all I could do. And uh, towards the end of August, it's my, both my mom's birthday, uh, my birthday, my brother's birthday. Um, about the last week of August of that year, my dad was like really struggling. He was on his last legs. He mustered up enough courage to have a great time with my mom on her birthday. But uh, September came around and, and um, my dad had to get a bed downstairs because he, really, he couldn't really walk at, at that point or really do anything by himself. And uh, it was about at that time where I started, you know, I was like, you know, okay, we gotta, we gotta uh, help as, as we have to help the family as much as I possibly can, and I have to stay positive. That was the most important thing. It was just staying positive, you know, just working towards my goals, um, doing the things my dad I know he would want me to do every day. And even though he was sick, and you know, I couldn't tell you how many nights uh, me and my mom can speak for this. He better probably better than me. Just the coughing like all night it's just a constant reminder that like the closest person in your life is is like fading and it's, it's a really weird feeling I can't totally describe but uh, especially in the last few weeks um, I spent nights downstairs with him my mom spent more nights than anyone downstairs with him um, and you know just just to make sure that he could, he wasn't he wouldn't get up in the middle of the night or rip off his oxygen or just like all kinds of, of things that, that happen when you're, you're near the end and, and you know it and you're trying to escape it um, so that was, that was definitely something I had to deal with at the time. And, uh, it also happened to be like the week before my dad passed away, we had my first finance exam. Needless to say, I completely bombed it. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't focus. I was, I was missing some classes cause I was, you know, trying to help my dad. And, and uh, of course that's like finance isn't really something you can, uh, you can just jump in and jump out of. You kind of got to be there for it cause the things compound and build off each other. So I bombed that. And then uh, this was like the last week before my, my dad passed. 
I'll never forget this. And this goes to show, and if you think that I have, if you think you ever are inspired by me, understand that everything is from my dad. Because in that last week, I'll never forget the hospice nurse coming over and uh, <laughs> talking with my dad. And my dad finally said, okay, like, you can, you can, you can help me with the hospice, blah, 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 like, bring over whatever you need to do. And he looked at her and he's like, but I still can get better, right? And like, I almost honestly had to leave the room because I was like, I can't even believe this guy is like, he's literally can't even move, but he's still fighting. And that was so powerful. And with me and my dad's relationship for so long, it was, it was very rocky. You know, he pushed me really hard when I was young and, and I didn't necessarily respond to that the way he wanted me to. You know, I, I had, I was a little of a bit of a rebel and I didn't, I never really, I've always been a rebel, I'm not going to lie, you know, clearly. <laughs> but, um near the end it, it's we became really great friends and, and seeing that and the amount of courage he had it really resonated with me and it, all of a sudden like I felt that same courage and I was like listen Graham if he can power through this and push through this and fight through this there's not one thing that you can't do a test a workout a business that's nothing compared to life and death that's nothing compared to leaving a man's family which is what he was about to do so I'll never forget that, and, and that's something that inspires me even still today. I mean, this is something I remember very vividly in my mind, and something I'll never forget. And I almost had to laugh because I almost couldn't believe it, because I was like, I can't even believe he's that tough. Like, wow, I'm 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 so inspired right now. And uh, I guess that leads up to the night before he passed. It, my mom had been down there for countless, countless nights um, with him. And I was like, Mom, listen, you're exhausted. Like, let me, let me, you know, sit down. Let's all sleep downstairs in the night and help him out. And this was, I mean, there were multiple nights where even my mom would hang out with him all night to make sure he was all right. And then, like, go upstairs like five. And then I would, all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, I would think I was in a dream. But then I would wake up and I would just hear voices downstairs. And I would very faint. Just a Graham, Graham. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Is it, is my dad? And so I go downstairs and I guess near the end, my dad knew that you know he was fading and in the middle of the night to escape I guess the next phase passing on he would actually get out of bed and try and walk and just like just escape the bed escape sleep and I would find him face down on the floor and like it was just unbelievable I couldn't believe it I, I was I just didn't know what to say I was so I was so I really had nothing to say I had no prior experience with anything like this and so I'd help him in bed but uh, fast forward to the last night um, we still don't know if it's true but we think my dad might have had a stroke before he uh, I mean he might have had a stroke and that's I think how he eventually passed um, but that last night and this is something that's very important to understand and this is really the reason why I do everything that I do is because when my dad was he was uh, he was ha he was having issues and I don't even really want to get into it too hard because it's probably it's just it's not really, it's just not, it's awful. <laughs> but he was, uh, you know, choking a little bit and like he was obviously fading, he couldn't really breathe. And I didn't really know what to do. You know, there was no nurse. Um, I didn't really want to make my mom because she was so exhausted. I didn't want to make my sister because of how upset she would be. So I just, you know, tried to hold his hand and I just told him, I said, Dad, listen, like, no matter what happens in my life, I promise you that I will be the absolute best that I can possibly be that no matter what happens, no matter how bad it gets, I will never give up. And then you can count on me to be the best human being I can possibly be. And then I'll help as many people as I possibly can. And then I'll do no harm. And I promise this to him. And this is something that I remember also very vividly. And something that I'll live by till the day I die. And it's the reason why I do what I do every single day. It's the reason why I have endless energy is because I'm on a mission to help people. I'm on a mission to help all of you. It's it's my job, and I've made a promise. My word is my bond on that. And my father, I know he's always looking looking down on me, especially on a day like today, a year later. You know the things that I've accomplished in just one year, putting my mind to it, of standing for something for one full year, of not breaking, not wavering, not once. It's really fantastic. Uh, it's unbelievable, and that all came from just one person's energy, um, and so. Earlier in that morning, um, 
I was exhausted and I had class that day. I had to go downtown, I had a test actually. <laughs> Obviously there was no way I was gonna take it, but um, my mom came up about an hour later. I had fallen asleep and she came in and she told me my dad passed away. Um, and uh, obviously I cried, you know. I'm not, gonna, I'm not trying to be any tough guy or anything, you know. It was, it was one of those moments where, you know, you, you, you with, you're, you're used to somebody being there for so long and then in one, one split second, it's over. And I went downstairs and I just looked at him and, and he was gone. There was absolutely no life left, that's for sure. Which, which uh, was one of the most interesting things I'd ever, I'd ever seen. And of course, I have great friends. I mean, I'll never forget this too. My one friend, um, my one friend, he, he calls me. You know, I texted some of my friends and my email my professors. I was like, hey, I'm not going to class. My dad just passed away, blah, blah, blah. And I, emailed, I texted my friend. I was like, hey, man, I'm just saying no. Like, my dad passed. And he's like, he's like calling me and texting me. And I didn't really want to talk to anybody. But being the good guy he is, he just shows up in my house 10 minutes later. And I needed that. And it was something I'll never forget. That's why we're bros. So if you guys have friends or even anyone close to you that would even remotely do something like that, that's more than enough to be thankful for right there. You know, you have so many things to be thankful for. It's unbelievable. My dad's close friend showed up 10 minutes later. My aunt, my uncle, before I knew it, there's a room full of people and a box of donuts. <laughs> and I definitely had a few. I definitely cheated. We're not going to talk about that, but I did. I had a few and they were dunking and they were pretty good. Um, but anyway, uh, it was just amazing to see so many people rally and gather so quickly. Um, and I'll, I'm not even gonna lie to you, later that day, even though I was, uh, I was down, I went to the gym. Because I had told myself, I said, Graham, you're gonna be on stage next year. And your dad would want you to be on stage next year because you told him that you would, you told yourself that you would. So I didn't miss a workout, uh, no way. There was absolutely zero percent. There was no possible way on earth that I was gonna be held back from my goals and my dreams. That's just not happening. And that's how the mentality needs to be. No matter what happens, you have to understand that. It's not even always for you. Like it's sometimes for me, yeah, it's important for me because I grow, but it's also because I said that I would do it for someone else. You know, I told him that I was gonna do it. And, and I, for a long time, he looked at me and he was like, yeah, yeah, but then as I, as I kept getting more serious, he, start, he started realizing how much it meant to me. And that everything he'd been trying to preach to me when I was younger, was all of a sudden coming for a full circle on my own passion. And now everything he wanted me to do when I was younger was all of a sudden happening right before his eyes. And I wish he were here today to see it. Um, I know he can see something, so I'm, I'm happy about that. But uh, it's different in person, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, moving forward, I guess for the, that semester, I went back, I took like a month off of school and in that month, I missed all kinds of class, all kinds of stuff. And I had to go back, and when I went back to class, I was behind in every single subject. And of course, my professors were very accommodating for me. They were helping me out, and I really appreciated it, but I was really far behind in a lot of these classes while training um, multiple times a day, trying to get in shape for this competition, trying to help my, my family. Um, and it was at that point, I would say, in late actually it was I, let me rewind real quick it was late late summer I had a conversation with my partner about selling our landscaping business and we decided that that's what we wanted to do because I didn't want to do it with the next 10 years of my life you know I want to do after my goals and after my dreams I knew I could do it and I know he didn't want to do it either and that was a very good decision very thankful because I wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for that um, but when I went back to class again I was really behind and uh, I'll never forget this because I was so far behind in finance class that I actually had to figure out a way to pass the class and I tried everything I mean I had missed homework so I went back to the professor and asked if I could reopen them to do them um, I had done decently on the second test and by decent I mean like maybe like a D <laughs> which isn't decent at all it stinks but I knew that on the last test to pass the class I only needed a 60% and this is something that's just so important for everyone to understand if I can pass college, anyone can pass college because I did not put anywhere near enough work in that it required. If I had put as much work in, in college as I had in the gym, I would be going to a medical school or something because that's how much you need to study to, to really excel. Uh, obviously, I didn't because it wasn't really my interest or my passion. But, you know, with a week left, 
and me realizing that everything is gonna come down to one test. And when I mean everything, I mean that if I don't pass this class, I can't take some of the classes I needed to take the next semester so that I could graduate on time so I could do my show. So everything was hinging on this test, like absolutely my whole life, everything that I had done, everything that I had said to my dad, it all was on the line on this one test. And of course, like, you know, I'm like cramming, cramming study. I'm watching all these videos of stuff. I'm confused as hell. I don't really, I don't even have the, of course I don't even have the book. <laughs> so I'm trying to teach myself finance in like a week. And uh, the day the test came and I took it. And when I left, I remember talking to some kid next to me. And I was like, I actually have no idea what I just did at all. Um, so I ended up doing really well on like all my other exams. In fact, in my one class, I had thought that I failed it and I ended up getting a 96 on the final and I had the top top grade in the whole section of the, of the school and I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. So I was waiting on that one test. And when I finally got the results back, I literally didn't know what to say. I just laughed because I got like a 62% and I needed like a 58 to pass it. So I literally skated by, by the skin of my teeth. And this is important to understand the reason that I passed this test was not because I studied and I just had 10 more minutes of study. It was because I had undying, unwavering faith in myself and my vision. I knew that I was going to be on stage and that nothing was going to stop me, not even this test. So somehow, some way, the chips were going to fall in my favor. I still don't know how it happened, but I can tell you that positive, positive thinking and positivity goes all along a long way and you have to remain positive through adversity and in a time like this where there's obviously emotions weighing on my mind you know so many things have happened in the past few months like things are moving fast and things are planned for the next year that are hinged on this you have to stay positive you have to understand and have faith in yourself that you know that you can do anything when I mean anything I'm talking about anything you put your mind to as long as you stay committed, stay consistent, and have that unwavering, undying faith in yourself. And again, it's unwavering, which means it doesn't bend or break no matter what. It's always the same. If you even have one remote, little negative thought, you shut it out immediately and replace it with positivity. I can't tell you how important this really is. So I passed it. Thank you, God. It was awesome. I was so relieved. And at that moment, I knew that everything that I had seen, all my visions were going to come true the next year. That I, I was on pace to do everything I needed to do. And come that spring, I started working harder at the gym. I started cutting and I started seeing a little bit better results. My classes in the spring weren't as difficult, so I was doing, I was doing well in them. Again, always pulling rabbits out of the hat at the last second, which is not good. Don't be a procrastinator like me sometimes. It's not good. It's one thing I need to work on still. By, by no means am I anywhere near perfect, but I'll tell you one thing that I do have is a positive attitude and unwavering faith. And those two things carry me all, whenever, when all else goes out, those are always the two things that carry me. Like, I would, I would really be amazed if you caught a moment where I wasn't being positive, unless it's in Destiny. <laughs> For all of you who know me when I play video games, I do, I do rage occasionally. Um, but that's all in good fun, just because I'm competitive. But the unwavering faith and the positivity will take you anywhere in life. And that's something you really just need to understand. And so we keep moving forward. And I guess after the semester, I passed all my classes. I think I did pretty good, actually. Got a couple Bs, which is solid. <laughs> and uh, I only had two summer classes left, and I could graduate. So my first show was in June, June 11th. And as I got closer and closer to my show, I had friends that were like, hey, you should try this, try that. And I, of course, you know me, I have no coach and uh, no posing experience. I've never been on stage before in my entire life, actually. Um, but I just knew that I was gonna do it anyway because I had made that commitment to myself and my dad and I knew that I was just gonna have to do it. And uh, so I get up there and I'll never forget this. You know, Of course, I get like, oh, I'm not even gonna tell you that one story. But I get uh, I get three, three coats of spray tan, I'm like, there's just pictures on my Instagram of me. I'm, I'm looking like Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. I'm straight, like not well, not this skin color anymore. It's uh, it's really funny, actually. But uh, I'll never forget, I get up there. I had no idea what to expect. The back, back room was a disaster. I was unfocused. I was pumping up way before I was supposed to go out. I was carving up before I was supposed to go out. I was doing all kinds of things wrong. I, I was, it was just a disaster. Uh, when I finally got up there, I was literally so nervous, like the nervous excited that... I was smiling so hard, my teeth were chattering. I was like, 
Like it was like it was absolutely ridiculous. And like obviously I hit my poses and stuff, and all my friends are cheering, and my mom, and my aunt, and my sister are there, and it was just such an exciting time. And afterwards, I got so much support from all the other competitors. They're like, dude, for no coach, for no this, for no that. Like this is your first show. Like you're gonna kill it. Like you could definitely do this. Stick with it. Blah blah blah. And uh, I was I, I, as soon as I got off stage, I was like, this is for me. This is definitely something I want to continue doing. I love this, like this is fun. Like I had a great time and I learned so much about myself through this experience, dating all the way back to when my dad passed away. All that adversity culminated into one moment on the stage where I actually followed through with what I said I was gonna do. And when you do that, when you follow through with what you say you're gonna do on a goal, you gain the confidence of all of that adversity. Oof, it goes all over you and you're just, you're literally just ignited on fire. And that's when you start getting to the point where like nothing can stop me except for myself. And that I'm never gonna quit. And I'm never gonna lose faith. And I'm gonna handle adversity each and every time. It doesn't matter what kind of adversity it is. If I have to jump over it, I will. If I have to run around it, I will. If I have to break through it, I will. If I have to melt it, I will. There's no there's some way to destroy adversity. You just have to figure it out. And it's so important. And that's what motivates me. It gets me excited. When I face adversity, I know that afterwards I'm gonna be better. So I don't mind getting up at 4.30 in the morning and then doing cardio. I don't mind lifting twice a day and pushing myself way out of my comfort zone. I don't mind staying up late if I have to. You know, I just don't mind because I know that afterwards I'm gonna be better for it. And it's just so important that through adversity you just get stronger and you need to understand that. It's just, it's just so important. And uh, so after that I decided to go on a road trip with my friends and it was the best time I ever had in my life. Went to Niagara Falls. Oh, there's so many, it's just an amazing adventure. I lived at the shore for a few months that summer, this past summer, so 2016, so a few months ago. And I started bulking for my next show, which is in 37 days. So for all of you who are watching now, I'm gonna leave my Snapchat and my Instagram below. I post on Snapchat and Instagram story all day. So you can kind of follow me around and just see how I live. Honestly, you know, just if there's anything you can take from me, anything of value at all, even one thing, it's worth tuning in because I'm only gonna get better as I go along here. And I told you, I've already told you more things about myself than most people know. Um, like I'm doing this for, for you guys and my dad. You know, that's who I'm doing this for. Like every time I get a message from someone saying, hey, Graham, like you're so inspiring. Like you're getting motivated. Like I lost 20 pounds. Like the, like my change my life. Like these things, you do not understand how powerful they are to me. Like that, every time I hear that, that's just, affirmation that I'm getting closer to my goal and dream of helping as many people as I can. And it's so important to me. Like it's more important than anything to me. Like I don't really party at all. Like I, I don't, I usually just hang out with my friends if anything. Otherwise like I'll go to sleep. My friends have been begging me all the time to come out with them and party and I just don't do it. It's not my style anymore. I, maybe back in the day when I was in college, but uh, now I just have no desire. You know, you guys mean more to me. And if, if you see me doing something that after I preach all these things that I'm just a hypocrite and a fraud and like there's already enough of those people on earth like I don't want to add to the party you know I want to be real I want you guys to understand that this person you're seeing right here if you were to walk up upon me right now at this lake you would be hearing the same person I would tell you the same story nothing changes nothing at all it's why I don't it's, you're always gonna catch me like what this is a good a good way to describe it's not a good way to describe me but Something to note is that whatever, the, my hair, right, it's already, oh, it's always goofy. I don't usually do anything to it at all. I just let it flow. And that's kind of how I live my life. I just let it flow because I'm always, I'm always the same. I just let things happen as they're going to happen. There's nothing I can do except be the best I can possibly be. And that's exactly what you should be going for too. Because every time that I help you get better, you know, you get fire, you get confidence, you gain motivation, inspiration. And maybe that person down the street who's used to look at you and say, hey man, he's like out of shape or he's not doing anything with his life, but then all of a sudden you are, you know, maybe they get fire from you and it just spreads. You know, it's just how it happens. It's one little candle can light thousands of candles. I mean, Buddha said that and it's just, it's amazing and it's true. And I know that because I've been doing just little things on Instagram and Snapchat for just such a short period of time, but I've seen incredible feedback from people all over the world. You know, we live in an era where you can actually connect with someone across the world. And you, be, you can become friends and build a real relationship. And it's actually the most exciting thing of all. And I just love what I do right now. Um, my job is so fun, just helping people get better. It's, it's insane. It's, I'm living my dreams every day. It's getting better each and every day. And uh, with uh, 37 days before my show, 
I thought, and especially on this day, um, the year after my dad passed, I thought it was really important for me to share with you, all of you, including my friends who don't even know this kind of stuff, especially the intimate moments with my dad before he passed, that you can fight through adversity and win. It's not gonna be easy. It's never easy, you need to understand that. It's never gonna be easy. If you wanna walk in the park or you wanna lay on the couch and play with your phone, understand that this life isn't for you. You're just gonna be, just, that's all you're ever gonna do is sit on the couch and talk about what you're never gonna do. But if you decide to put your stupid phone down for two seconds and go out and experience life like I am right now, or push yourself in the books, in the gym, outside, experience nature, grow your mind, body, and spirit every day, and build your faith, you will literally be able to do anything that you choose, anything that you want, as long as you stay committed, as long as you stay consistent, and as long as you have the courage to fight through adversity when it rises. Because listen, for as well as I think I'm doing in my life right now, I know at any moment, adversity could strike. I could get injured, I could have a problem with family, I could, I don't know, there's so many things that could happen, anything could happen. My house could burn down, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Because I know that no matter what happens, I'll adapt and I'll survive and I'll keep going because I don't quit. I don't bend, I don't break. I just stay the course. And that's so important for all of you to understand that if I can do it, if I can do all of those things that happened to me in the last year and end up here right now where I said I was gonna be, a fitness, a fitness athlete, you know, a coach, <laughs> a, 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 a inspirational guy, a motivational speaker in some ways, if I can do all those things that I said I was going to do a year ago in just one year, what can you do in a year when you stay committed? That's the ultimate question. I think you can do anything, but you have to believe it. You have to truly know it. You have to jump out of bed for it. And when I mean jump out of bed, I'm talking about when I get up in the morning, I throw the sheets off and I jump out of bed. First thing I do, I literally jump. My mom's like, what's all that racket? It's me. <laughs> You know, like you gotta get excited. You gotta attack your goals each and every day. You gotta want it. You gotta be hungry for it each and every day. And like I said, it's each and every day. It's not a, oh, I'm not feeling it today. I'm just gonna sleep in. It's a no, it's an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle. It becomes you. You have to become what you want through thought, through action, and through faith, more importantly than anything. That unwavering, undying faith. And I'm gonna talk so much more about that in my life. But again, I just wanted to share with you um, just some things about me here for all of you who don't totally know me. Um, I'm going to do more of these videos. There's obviously, there's more things that I would like to say, but I also don't want to take three hours out of your day to tell you everything about me. Um, but I really just wanted you to understand that like, you can fight through this adversity, no matter what it is. Like is. I've done it. You know, It hasn't been easy, but I've done it. And so can you. You just have to have faith. So always, no matter what happens in your life, keep the faith in yourself. Feel it. Here. Grow your mind, body, and spirit through adversity. And you will gain all of the experience through that adversity. And it will become your confidence. It will become your character. It will become you. The best version. Everyone have an amazing day. And for anyone who ever needs to talk, or has anything or wants to get better or just anything at all seriously no matter what it is please feel free to message me um, on any of my social medias if you message me oftentimes I'll give you my number too I, I, I don't really care I, as long as you're trying to get better I'm trying to help so feel free I'm gonna leave some links below um, feel free to comment on any experiences you've had where you've beaten down adversity I would love to hear it you know People don't understand, like when I say, like, yo, comment, I want to hear it, like, I want to hear it, so comment, <laughs> please. Everyone uh, else, have an amazing day.